G'day YouTubers. Ah, alright. It's me, John Green. Anyway, uh, I've been waiting a long, long, long time for this. Wish I had better light for it. Okay. Anyway, uh, as I said, I had... Um, the only thing I had is monitors with these excellent, excellent Sony headphones. Uh, like I said, Joe Rogan uses them, but also they've been used since the 80s. Uh, the modern ones are slightly different, but you'll find that these Sony's are absolutely professional quality monitors. The issue I had, of course, was that after about three to five hours, it hurts your ears because it's pressing against the cartilage, which is pressing against your head. Uh, if you get the bigger ones, I think uh, the Bayer Dynamics, the open back ones, they're very nice. They fit over your whole ear, so you don't have the pressure on your ear itself. The whole ear sits inside the cup. Whereas with these Sony's, the um, padding sits kind of on your ear or over the edge. So it kind of cups it all in, but then it puts pressure on your uh, ear itself. Not much pressure, but I mean, after about, you know, a, a day of, a good day of editing, uh, it's going to be painful and it's going to make your ears really hot. And, you know, your ears are probably quite moist and stuff by then. It's not very pleasant. So, what did I do? I ordered, I think maybe even before Christmas, but I ordered the Unique 5 Plus uh, studio monitors and I did a hell of a lot of research. I checked out, um, so I'll just get rid of that monitor, yeah, all right, I checked out the, uh, everything. Uh, I looked at the Yamahas, the fives, the five inch sub, um, because I need a little bit, I don't need big speakers in this room, because only me, uh, and my head will be close to the speakers. It doesn't make sense to play at high volume. I almost bought some sevens, some Sony sevens. Oh no, Yamaha 7s, uh, they would have been too big and they would have uh, basically blown my head off or I just have to play them at very low volume all the time. Uh, so I bought 5 inch speakers as my studio monitors because I actually find that the smaller monitor uh, gives you just as much clarity as something bigger. You don't maybe get as much woof in the bottom end but I'm not playing it for other people, I'm playing it to listen to the music. Uh, it doesn't have to go behind me to a couch full of rappers and MCs who want to hear their song I'm the only one listening and uh, so I got the very best monitors I could afford for under 500 bucks so $500 is a lot of money when you don't have an income uh, you're on the dole and collecting money from the government hashtag thankful um, so I waited months to save up that money and then I waited a month even after I bought the speakers on Amazon, oh sorry, on uh, eBay, uh, they sent me an, a message saying we haven't got them in stock until next week, and then at the end of next week we'll send them to you. Whew. And I thought, damn. Uh, so that was a couple weeks ago at least, and now today I got my speakers. The reason it's a big deal is because now I don't have to use my headphones as much, or just very sparingly. Uh, I'll be able to listen for longer. And the reason that I chose the Unique 5 Plus uh, is because at the moment, for what they are, they're the very best uh, studio monitors under $500 uh, with ribbon tweeters, so they're not harsh and sharp. I think that's the main complaint about the um, Yamaha monitors, uh, that uh, they're very clear and very precise, especially in the higher um, frequencies, mid to high fre frequencies. But after a few hours, it actually starts to... Uh, be irritating. So you can get ear fatigue and then you can't hear very well by the end of the day your hearing isn't as good as it was at the start of the day. When you use ribbon um, tweeters you're going to have less of a, a drastic or dramatic uh, clarity of the high end. You have an overall from the top to the bottom um, an even uh, palette or an even uh, gradation of all of the frequencies so these are supposed to be real studio monitors. The reason I didn't buy the Adams, 
I looked at the atoms, I even looked at the ASX, I think that's what they are. Um, I looked at the atom monitors and I liked them a lot and they're powered too. So using powered speakers these days is the only way to go. Uh, there's less things to plug in. You just plug the speaker in, already has an amp inside. Um, you don't need extra wires. You just need a wire going from wherever you're going into that speaker. The Adam Audios, after watching hundreds, hundreds of uh, YouTube videos, the Adam Audios had uh, the most scrupulous uh, engineers said that it was a very, very good high-end hi-fi speaker, which basically means that it made certain things a little more clear uh, and the bottom a little more pronounced, so it makes your music sound good at home but I don't know if that's what I would want for a clean studio monitor. Uh, the, I think it was the ASX series or something with the little knobs on the front, the Atom. Uh, I couldn't even afford those things. Even the 500, sorry, the, uh, uh, the 5 inch ones were like 700 euros a pair. So, you know, I, I can't afford that kind of thing. A lot of you are probably in the same boat. And I mean, the thing is, I've got my old speakers, I'm going to probably sell them on YouTube, I would sell them on eBay or whatever. Uh, I need money, and I've basically sold off everything. I've only got one pedal left, uh, but almost everything else has been sold. Believe it or not, I'm going to sell my electric piano, because it's come to that. At any rate, um, they say, a person's treasure is where their money is, and my money is going into making a digital studio and making a modern recording uh, environment uh, for myself and who knows possibly a vocalist it arrived today all right so this is it the Adam no no they're not Adams I've been talking about Adams speakers for the last five minutes these are the unique U U N K Unique 5 Plus. It's a very uh, substantial package. Remember, these are powered speakers, powered monitors, which means they have amplifiers in them. That's why they're heavier. And the reason I wanted to make the video is because I haven't seen much information about this brand before. See I used just the end of this little bit of metal but I still managed to scratch this cardboard pretty good. I'm glad I didn't use a knife. The speakers are in their own boxes which is what I would expect when you pay top dollar. And again I don't want to scratch anything. I have to be very careful. Plus, I don't want to sell these again, but if I do, they should be in the best condition possible. Alright, and now they're in the store box. Alright. Alright, that's what the box looks like from the shop. They sealed that up as well. I guess for security or something, but it's completely sealed. All right. I can hear some little janglies in there, but I have a feeling it might be bracing stuff for the speakers. All right, and this one. I bought this from Germany, but I think these things are made in France. There are not too many videos that show these uh, speakers. Alright, let me just get rid of those big bits of cardboard. Okay. Let's have a look. Again, I have to be very careful just to pierce it uh, and no more. I don't want to scratch this thing. I 
the the box that you would get in the store has a fair bit of info. I mean, it's got images of the product. It has um, this scoop at the top, which is wide instead of just being a hole, and I prefer that because my speakers are going to be closer to the um, wall. And if it's just a hole, it, it could kind of maybe be impeded by being that close to the wall. Right. A little book, which I'll probably never open. Ah, very nice. 15 amp um, oh, EU. That's cool too. I'm happy that's EU because my whole studio is EU plugs and uh, I don't use UK plugs very much just for my lights alright that's a nice 15 amp fat heavy bit of cable these feet I hear good things about <laughs> alright so these feet I guess that's the f one of the first things you have to put on uh, this is a little thing that plugs up the hole in the back of the speaker. I'm not sure why you want to plug it up, but that's what it's for. Alright, these are the feet. Uh, I'll show you that in a minute. But the feet have a, a lot of people say good things about them because they're rubberized. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Excellently packaged. Alright, what are we looking at? It's also really, really cool because it's got an orange cone made of Kevlar. And Kevlar is a particular material that works at high frequencies. It can move back and forth without cracking or flexing. It stays stiff. And at the very top there, which I've never seen in my life, is a ribbon tweeter never seen one before not in true life just on the internet remember I live on an island I'm in Ireland but Ireland is pretty far from everything else maybe not Dublin but on the west coast this is something spectacular all right look at the yeah it looks just like the photograph on the back uh, that plastic thing where is that here not sure what you want to do this for, but you can plug this up. Maybe you get a tighter bass response. Maybe. Personally, I'll just stiff, stick it in there for now because I don't know what else to do with it. Maybe later on I'll try it without this in the back. And see... Uh, ugh, come on, you bastard. Alright, it's just foam. Just got to center it very properly. There we go. That's it. Alright, so I've plugged it, plugged up that air hole for the base. Why? I'm not sure, but that's what this thing comes with. I will leave this until later, after a week or two. I'll pull it out and see if there's a different response. Because I want to hear this properly. It has a beautiful, balanced uh, XLR input. Ground lift, don't expect to be using that. But it also has an EQ on the back. It has a gain, which I don't expect to be using. I don't expect to really be using any of this. I guess it's for tuning your room. But uh, again, I'll get back to you on that. I'll just leave everything flat on the settings that I got it. I'll leave this uh, plug in the back of the speaker. And uh, I'll give you another review in a couple weeks after I've tried it out properly. Alright, let's try these feet. Alright, there's these tiny little pricks, pin pricks, here. I don't know if you can see them. There's little pin pricks on the bottom of the speaker. And I guess there are already some pre drilled holes. Let's have a look. Alright, there's the foot and uh, some kind of axle so this shaft goes onto the foot and then this uh, 
stopper thing. For now, I'll just put it all the way down. But uh, you can lift this stopper up and then angle the speakers so they face your head. Uh, that's especially in the case where you've got... Um, uh, yeah, you want to angle the speaker up because the speakers are sitting on the table and you're using a laptop or something. Uh, I'm not going to do that, but I'm putting the feet on because they're really awesome. Alright, I'm just going to put them all the way down. And then somehow... Oh, I see. What? No, I don't see. There's a screwdriver. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with it. Because it... <laughs> Alright. Alright, there's these holes. And I would imagine that this thing would just. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you kind of like pop a little membrane where the hole is. I... Oh, the screwdriver is for tuning the back of the EQ, the back of the box, the back of the amplifier. Alright, so I'm going to keep this, it's, oops, <laughs> it's quite a quality little piece of, a uh, little bit of equipment. It's unbreakable. Alright, screw that all the way down. I'm going to do that for all of these. Alright, just put the shaft in, roll down the stopper all the way to the bottom and then put the whole thing in uh, I don't know if you can do it closer, I'll try to do a bit closer so you can sort of see what I'm doing it's not rocket science uh, right, check this out so there's a membrane you kind of pop it you can feel underneath there's a screw hole you just got to center the foot till it finds the screw Damn it. Alright. It's hard to do holding up to the camera. It's easier to do it on a flat surface. Got it. So I've already got cat hair on the feet. That's why you can't have cats in the studio. Because they have feet. I mean, because they, they get on everything. Cats can jump on everything. And then their hair goes everywhere and it can uh, compromise your delicate equipment but I do like cats if you have one it's okay if you've got three yeah, that can be a little troublesome if they all want to sleep on the keyboard or something <laughs> which is something that happens quite often alright it's got to find the foot properly yeah, and, and you shouldn't have to force it. You know, if it's going in at an angle, you're doing it wrong. And uh, as you can see, I don't have to use a lot of force. It's just the pressure of my fingertips turning these feet and putting them... Uh, oops. Start here. And putting them in their place. Um, the feet are essential. Of course, you don't have to put the feet on if you've got something else already some acoustic foam or something like that, that's fine but I think these feet are part of the selling point <laughs> as funny as it sounds I think they're part of the selling point of these uh, unique but it's spelled U-N-I-K it's the O5 Plus U-N-I-K, so unique but I guess that's the French spelling maybe it isn't, but it's a French company Alright, we've got the feet on, with the stoppers and all of that. This one, the stopper can come up. Ah, look at that, then the stopper stays where it's put. Sure, I see what's going on. Excellent, excellent. Alright. One down, I'm going to plug the other one in. Actually, I'll, yeah, I'll plug that in in a sec. I'll put the other one together. 
I'm keeping all of my boxes because this is a valuable piece of equipment. I'm going to order one. Yep. One pair. Alright, so that's the one box, the shop box, and then the postage box. So if you're going to send it away, you would use this second box on top. Alright, I'm going to hold on to that, and you really should hold on to all your old boxes, because believe me, you're going to need them. At some point, you're going to sell that bit of equipment, that thing you love you'll sell it and then you'll want to sell it with a box because it's worth more money. Looking speaker, huh? Pretty. Pretty. Hmm. That tweeter is something special. Can't wait to hear it. The idea is to reduce ear fatigue. With ribbon tweeters, they say you can listen to these speakers all day long and into the night without suffering ear fatigue, unlike some other studio monitors out there, and especially if you use hi fi speakers they will give you ear fatigue after a certain amount of time. Alright, I'll start with... Uh, I don't know really why people want it, this thing, but uh, I'm going to block up the speaker, the sub hole, just for now. Like I said, in a couple weeks, I'll take this thing out of the sub hole, but I want to hear what it's like just in case there's a reason people have it. Maybe it's a tighter base or something. All right. As you can see, all of the settings for the um, EQ on the amplifier are in the middle. I'm not even going to touch them. Uh, of course, you know, if you're listening to your system over a few days, you probably have a pretty good idea of what's right and wrong. If you listen to songs that you already know, you know, Fleetwood Mac, Pink Floyd, you know, Jimi Hendrix, whatever you like. Older songs, you listen to them on a monitor and then you'll get a good idea of whether that song is right or wrong because you know that song well. In that case, maybe you might want to reduce the mids if they're too sharp. Or maybe you want to reduce the top end if it's too tinny. But uh, I don't know. So, you know, like right now, I trust the factory to have got that right. And I'm not going to play with this right now. Even the gain, I'm not going to turn it louder or anything. It's not necessary for my needs. The bottom is funny, though, with that, these four little pin pricks. You would not know that there's something under there, except that you get these four feet with the box. Then you figure they've got to go somewhere. Uh, I thought the little screwdriver thing... I thought the little screwdriver was uh, for putting these feet in somehow. 
but no, it's for doing the amplifier or setting up the amp, the EQ on the amp. When I turn these on, I don't know whether there'll be a pop. Uh, I looked at the sevens of this brand, and it looked, it sounded like people said there's a pop when you turn it on. But to tell you the truth, I'm not the kind of person who turns his amps on and off. I turn the whole system on and off. Uh, if there's a pop at sort of 7 o'clock in the morning and another pop at, you know, 8 o'clock at night when I turn it off, then uh, it might not be that bad. But um, I've heard there's a standby mode or something. Or if that's, yeah, there's a standby mode. And I've been told from a, a video, a French guy I think made it. He said that when the standby button is on, the popping, uh, the pop of turning on and off is more pronounced. So he just says he leaves standby off. Uh, I don't need a standby mode either. Uh, I'm happy if my amp's on all day. It's no problem. I mean, that's really what they're designed for. Whoops. I got to, forgot to put a stopper on this one. Where is that little bugger? Ah. Alright, so the foot is great on its own, but this stopper that goes on is really the part that is holding up the weight of the speaker. So it's important that you assemble the feet correctly, otherwise they're not going to work when you try to adjust them. Uh, anyway, what the French guy was saying was that when he has standby clicked on in the back of his amp, you know, the power saving mode, uh, yeah, his turning it on and off is frightening. It's uh, scary and loud. All right, where is this hole? Got it. No, is that it? No, it's an angle. Don't put the bad boy in at an angle. I see. See, a bit of the membrane went into the hole, so it's not finding the thread very easily. I don't think it's a big problem. But anyway, yeah, some of that membrane went down into the thread, and that makes it more difficult. But not impossible. I just squeeze that bastard in. <laughs> uh, it just holds it in tighter anyway. It's just a little bit of plastic. Uh, and I don't want to remove it in case I accidentally damage the cover. So it's okay if a little bit of the membrane goes down into the hole. No issue. The, the tricky bit is you just kind of put it in on the side here and pop it. You can feel it actually kind of break through. And then it's not really that big a deal to find the hole. And then screw it all the way down. Make sure your stopper is all the way up or you're not going to get the full benefit. I like to have mine all the way down at the start at least to sense what's going on. These are anti-vibration feet. And so they will stop your table or your bookcase or whatever from vibrating while you play music because it's those vibrations can make sympathetic uh, vibrations with all your other stuff and then before you know it you can hear rattling and it could just be a piece of paper with a pen on it but it's a rattling noise that you can't figure out what's going on and it's because your uh, speakers are vibrating the table or they're vibrating the bookcase or vibrating the shelf they're on and uh, in that case you don't have a silent studio you have a noisy studio that makes rumbly noises and that's not helpful to anyone you probably just end up using your speak your headphones the whole time <laughs> instead of using your speakers so yeah um, there is still more soundproofing to be done in this room. I'm not going to deny that. Can't find the hole. Uh, yeah, there's more soundproofing to be done, especially the floor. I want to pull up the carpet. I want to put down um, rubber, rubber sheeting, uh, and then put a false floor over the top, you know, like a floating floor, and then put the carpet back on. Because uh, I can hear my wife's computer downstairs and uh, if she's listening to documentaries or audiobooks or whatever 
but that might interfere with my recording. What's that? Same issue, right? So the membrane goes down into the hole, and then I can't find the hole real well because the membrane is squeezing it off to one side. But it's cool. Once you realize what's going on, I think it just pushes the plastic down into the hole, and then there's no issue anymore. All right, tighten everything finger tight. It doesn't have to be hardcore. You know, this isn't a concert. Um, I've plugged up the sub hole just to see how it sounds. And now it's time to plug these bad boys in and uh, fire them up. All right, I'm back. I've um, been testing the speakers for the last couple of days. <laughs> and um, I'll show you what the, I forget the name of the French guy. There's a French guy who did a review. So. Righto. And um, <coughs> I don't know if you can see this. I, I've got to probably take the camera and move it closer. The ESI logo is lit. I don't know if you can kind of tell really, but it's red, not orange. The cone is orange. And the red sign means it's on standby. So what I was talking about is that there's a standby button on the back of the speaker. Let's have a look at this. All right. Uh, there it is, standby. When the standby button is in the activated position, I mean down, that little red light comes on. If you haven't used any audio or you're not, uh, you know, broadcasting any audio for a, a few minutes. The thing is that it's not the problem that it puts it into standby. I don't know why Jackie wants to interrupt everything. There's one of those cats I was telling you that it's bothering me. Yeah, bothersome. You're bothersome. <laughs> anyway, um, this red light is on, showing it's on standby. And then when you put some audio in, what I mean is when you play some audio, uh, the standby kicks off, but then it makes a click noise. All right, so check it out. Just play anything. What will happen is that this light will switch from being a, a red light, which is kind of hard to tell in this light, um, and then it will turn orange the same color as the cone, but it'll also click. So listen to this. See, it even started after the music was already playing. But the uh, LED now is orange, the same color as the speaker. I guess that's their signature color, this particular kind of burnt orangey kind of. It's a nice color. Um, so now I have to go back to the start and start again. All right, no problem. Orange light. The thing is, if I stop and do something else, if I start editing a video or answer an email or check Facebook or whatever, then this click noise kicks in again. So I've turned it off. I don't know how long it takes. I hope it doesn't take too long. But you're going to hear this click when it turns off, and then you hear the click when it turns on. It's got a very, very simple fix. <laughs> all right, I don't know how many minutes it might take, but uh, all right, it's got you just turn off the standby mode. I like the standby mode at night time, so the idea is that the amplifier is switched off all night long, uh, otherwise, you could switch off your whole system, um, which I do recommend doing, and it is the safest thing to do if you live in a place that has storms and things that you should uh, switch off your whole system at night time. But like I said, these are new speakers, 
and uh, I mean all you have to do is reach around the back and switch each one off uh, conversely I could just hit these two switches and that turns off all of the power to everything so if there's a big storm and lightning and whatnot uh, I can switch off these switches even unplug it from the wall and there won't be any issue